Let's do this. Hey, Connor here from Biker's Edge, and today we're talking about Fox Live Valve. So Live Valve launched a couple of years ago, and it promised to be the biggest, best, newest, coolest thing in bike suspension. And since then, it kind of faded into the background a little bit. Haven't seen it too much, haven't seen too much about it, but Fox recently revised it and launched Live Valve 1.5. It's not a full revision, it's more of just a refinement. So today we're gonna dive deep, talk about Live Valve, what it is, how to set it up, what it's good at, if it's worth the price tag, and ultimately if it's the right move for you. So what is Live Valve and how does it work? Basically, it's a bunch of electronic sensors on the bike and in the suspension that control your suspension as you ride. I like to think of it as you know a bunch of tiny little magical elves inside your suspension twisting and turning knobs as they get feedback from the trail. In reality, it's just inclinometers, accelerometers, and they're basically trying to interpret what the bike is doing, what the trail looks like, and they're making adjustments on the fly for you at a thousand times per second, which is really fast. The brain or the computer takes all of that data that it's getting from the trail and it opens and closes little solenoids in your suspension. The idea is that it'll give you a firmer pedaling platform, but then it'll open up when it hits bumps so that you have traction, comfort, and control. So picture it this way, you're on a smooth fire road climbing uphill, there's really no bumps to speak of, the bike is tipped upwards. The suspension's going to firm up. It's going to give you a better pedaling platform so that you can have more efficiency out of your bike. Now let's say you hit some rolling, a little bit bumpier terrain and the fork hits a bump and that's going to open up the system so that the suspension can move as it should. Now you get to the top of the climb and you're about to go back downhill. So the bike is now pointing downhill and the system should basically just be open so that you get the best of your suspension. At least that's how it should work in theory. And for the most part, it actually does a really good job. There are a couple of moments on the trail that might actually confuse it just a little bit, but we'll get into those a little bit later. Live Valve 1.5 now uh, comes with an app, which is one of the best things about it. It's also maybe dialed back a little bit from 1.0, which went like full hardtail or full open. This kind of falls in the middle somewhere, but the app makes it super easy. You've got a bunch of different settings you can choose from. You've got climb, firm, comfort, sport, and open. Each one of those has its own unique ride quality, and within each one of those, you can kind of set the system sensitivity on a scale of one to five, where one takes a very small bump to activate, and five takes a bigger bump to activate. So I definitely suggest playing around with those. It's super easy to pull your phone out on the trail and change between them. I was really surprised that they were as different as they were, you know, in my head. I was like, ah, oh, it's all gonna be the same. Not the case. So let's jump into setup. How do you set it up? Uh, basically, you set it up just like you would set up the suspension on your regular bike, except you do need to make sure live valve is either off or in the open setting when you check your sag and rebound. Other than that, you're just going to set your sag how you normally would, set your rebound how you normally would. There are little compression adjusters. They recommend opening that up all the way when you set your sag and rebound. You can dial those back in a little bit firmer if that's what you like later, but to set sag and rebound, open those up all the way. Make sure the system's off or in open mode. One extra step you'll need to do is calibrate the bike and you'll need to make sure it's on flat ground, you know, front to back and side to side. Get it as flat and upright as possible. Hit the calibrate button within the app and that's going to calibrate where all of the sensors are so that it knows if the bike's pointing up or down. Hopefully it's never upside down. After you set it all up, just connect it in the app, pick the setting you want and go for a ride. So I'm using a Giant Trance X for this test. Uh, it's a bike that I've spent quite a bit of time on. I'm pretty familiar with it. I actually really like the bike. It's a good, firm, efficient climbing bike to begin with. So I have really high hopes for Live Valve. Let's jump into the ride qualities of Live Valve. I wanna talk about what I'm looking for. Uh, like I said, I really like the Trance X. It climbs great in the first place, um, but if it can climb better, you know, with magically controlled electronic suspension, great, let's, let's make that happen. With one big qualifier though, I don't want it to interfere or get in the way of how the bike descends. I don't want it to do anything weird. So for me, if it climbs more efficiently and pedals more efficiently on rolling terrain and it doesn't do anything weird on the downhill, that's a win. All right, so I started out my test in the sport mode. It seemed like that was the most neutral setting and I kind of wanted to get just a baseline for what the system could do. And we started out with a climb, like 
most rides start. The climb was smooth up a fire road, so I didn't notice anything going on. And it's because the system was kind of firm and locked out anyway. Uh, there wasn't anything to open it or change it. Once we hit kind of more rolling terrain, there were a couple roots and rocks and bumps and things in there. That's when I started to notice things happening. And first of all, you hear it. There are little clicks when those solenoids open and close. And then you can definitely feel the suspension open and close. It's way more apparent than I thought it was going to be. And, and not in a bad way. I, I think that goes to show you that it actually makes a difference, that it's not just, oh, let's put fancy electronic bits on your suspension and charge way more for it. I was actually pretty surprised to find that the bike got it right most of the time. You know, the bike was pointing uphill and things firmed up. The bike got on flatter terrain or started hitting bumps and it would open up. And I was actually really surprised at how quickly it happened. And I guess it turns out that a thousand times per second is really, really fast. So you hit a bump and instantly you, you hear the little click and suspension opens up. A little bit of time goes by, closes back down, firms up again. If you continue to hit bumps, it continues to stay open. And again, really surprised at how accurate it was. I was most concerned about it on the downhills. I didn't want it to lock out in a corner or off of a lip of a jump or through a nasty rooty section. I wanted my suspension to feel open for the most traction, comfort, and control I could have. For the most part, it got it right. You know, the bike tips down and it basically puts it in downhill mode and stays open. And I made sure to test it on steep descents as well as not as steep and a little flowier and pumpier. And honestly, it got it right almost everywhere. I never noticed weird, harsh lockout moments in steep chattery bits. I didn't notice it really at all on the flow trail. I didn't notice it in corners too much. The place where I did notice, and actually is kind of scary, is on jumps, especially ones on flatter trails. I think the bike thinks that it's now going uphill, locks out, and then you, as you're pumping, it locks out and that can kind of buck you forwards, so not great. Actually, on steep trails with smaller jumps or smaller lips, it, it didn't do that, I didn't notice, and I think it's because the bike's pointing pretty downhill, so it just stays open. It's on kind of flow trails where you're, you're pumping or rolling, you've got a long flattish section into a, a lip, that's where you feel it lock out, maybe when you don't want it to. I would probably suggest on those trails putting it in the open mode or turning it off, which kind of defeats the purpose because now you're manually controlling your automatic magical suspension. One pro tip, which isn't really that pro because I'm not all that pro, I kind of assumed climb mode would be the most efficient uphill, the fastest, all about climbing. And it turns out it's not. Uh, that would be firm. Firm is just gonna be all about efficiency. Climb does something really, really cool where it will tune the rear, but not the front. So you can still kind of sag into your fork a little bit, but the back stays firm. And that way when you're on steep climbs, the front end's not even higher because that fork's locked out, making the front end wandery, making you fall off the back of the bike. It, it lets you sag in, keep your geometry better and keep you over the front of the bike a little bit better. And then when you're on flat ground or downhill, it basically puts it into sport mode. I wish you could do a climb comfort split instead of just climb sport split, but you know, maybe in a future version. And that leads me into my favorite setting. I ended up preferring comfort, I think for the most part, and then climb for steep climbs. Comfort felt more like what I'm used to, but I still noticed the benefits of the suspension firming up on climbs and rolly terrain. So overall, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Live Valve, uh, which I'm surprised to say because I hadn't always heard great stuff about it for the first couple of years. I think this refined version uh, works a lot better. So big fan, almost 90 plus percent of the time it got it right and it did what it was supposed to do and offered benefits. I think, you know, it was a very small minority of the time where it did something you didn't want it to do. All right, so who is Live Valve for? I see it great for two different groups. And the first group is split into two subgroups. The first group are the folks who are trying to eke out every last bit of efficiency from their bike. And I, I kind of divided that again into two. The first being the XC fiends, the down country people who are just trying to go uphill as fast as possible, tear their friend's legs off and not waste any energy at all uphill. And the second half of that group are the folks who are maybe on like long travel bikes who need a little more efficiency out of their bike because they run it with quite a bit of sag and it's a slack, long, heavy bike in the first place. If you could get a little more efficiency out of it on the climbs, that would be great. Problem with that is there aren't too many bikes that Live Valve is offered on in that category. It would be great to see more of that. 
The second main group I see live valve being great for are the folks who are set it and forget it types of people. You know, they wanna set up their suspension once or have a shop help them set it up, find their favorite mode in the app and then never touch it again. And there is something great to be said about that. Letting live valve and the, all the math and science and magical elves do all the work for you to get the maximum performance you can out of your suspension without you having to mess with it. Just get on the bike and ride. All right, so there you have it. This is the dummies guide by a dummy for Fox Live Valve. It was a pretty great experience for me. I actually really, really liked it. If it came on my bike, I would not be sad about it. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. We'll do our best to get you answers. And uh, thanks for sticking around. See you next time.